Hi guys, I'm Pastor Jose. I'm the pastor of, Ho of Hope City Church here in Sacramento, uh, Natomas. I want to invite you tomorrow at 12 o'clock, 3750 Rosin Court. We're right behind the Taco Bell. We are practicing social distancing. We're wearing our masks. We're doing temperature, temperature checks at the door. They're even giving me a temperature check at the door too. And so it is a perfect place to come on Sundays if you want to get close to Jesus, hear God's word, and hear some great worship music. If you're watching on YouTube, I want to encourage you to like, subscribe, leave your comments, and I'm going to go into prayer, and then we're going to just get into, dive into God's word. I want to thank you, God, for those that are watching on Sac Faith TV and those that are watching on YouTube. I just pray you bless them. And, Help them to hear your word as I get into uh, the book of Revelation. Would you give us all a, a revelation of who you are and help us to understand that last book of the Bible. It's in your holy name we pray, Jesus. Amen. If you have your Bibles, go to Revelation 3.7. The title of my message is The Church of Brotherly Love. We read here, to the angel of the church of Philadelphia, right? Did you know that you could share Jesus through a letter? Uh, I'm sure you've done that before. Well, John, he's writing this letter to this church in Philadelphia, but Jesus is telling John what to write. And so he says this to this particular church in Turkey. It was located in East Turkey. So he says, these are the words of him who is holy and true and holds the key of David. What he opens, no one could shut. And what he shuts, no one could open. I know your deeds. So God sees everything. He's, another translation says, I see your works. See, I have placed before you a open door that no one can shut. I know that you have little strength, yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. I will make those who are a synagogue of Satan, who claim to be Jews, though they are not, but are liars. I will make them come and fall down at your feet, acknowledge that I have loved you. I want you to know this morning that God loves you. Jesus loves you. And Jesus goes on to say, since you have kept my command and endured patiently, I'll keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come on the whole world to test the people of the earth. We're gonna just stop right there. Here's my first point that Jesus has opened up a door to have a relationship with you. He has opened up a door for friendship. That's the, one of the most beautiful things you can have in life is a good friend. You know, it's not easy to find a good friend. I remember growing up, I found such a friend. His name is Jody Klein. Uh, we grew up, we used to dance together. He was my dance partner, so we used to do dance routines all the time. That's what we had in common. He loved to dance, I loved to dance. And so, but he became my best friend. And one time I, I got in a terrible fight and I got a big black eye. The, the, the guy I fought was a good fighter. And I, I'm a pretty good fighter too. But uh, unfortunately, the guy I, I fought, he was a friend too, but we became enemies. And it was such an ugly fight. I, uh, I did some things I regret. He ended up going to the hospital. And that night, I felt terrible for what I did to him. When I, looked by, when I looked in the mirror, I didn't like who I saw anymore. I didn't like who I was becoming. And so that, that night, I, I, I just needed a friend to talk to. So I drove to my friend Jody's house and I, I told him what I did and, I, and what happened and he didn't judge me. 
He was there to listen to me and and uh, I just needed someone to listen, someone that would listen to me that night. And I want you to know that you have a friend. His name is Jesus. He's there to listen to you. He, he, he's, yes, he's your Lord and personal Savior, but the Bible says he's also your friend. We read in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Jesus wants to give you rest. And, the, and then we read on in John chapter 15, 15. I no longer call you servant, but I call you friend. Is that beautiful? Jesus is telling his disciples, hey, I want to take our relationship to that next level. I want to be your friend. Is that beautiful? So here's the question I have for you. Do you look at Jesus as your friend or do you look at Jesus as your enemy? Thank you, son. See, Jesus wants you to look at him as a friend, not as a foe. We read in Revelation 3.8, I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut. Jesus wants to open up this big door for you into a relationship with him that will last for eternity. Did you know the word Philadelphia means brotherly love? So Jesus is telling this church, hey, we're brothers and let's love one another. See like Josiah has, my son Josiah has a brother. His name's Jaden and they love each other. And I have a big brother named Abel and I love him. There's nothing that could change that. I'm always gonna love my brother and Josiah is always gonna love his little brother. See, Jesus loves you like a little brother. He's always going to love you. Nothing could change that. And Jesus wants the church of Philadelphia to love people. Remember the greatest commandment? To love God and to love others as you love yourself. It seems to me that this church in Philadelphia was doing a great job loving each other. And so God is calling all of us to, into an open door relationship with him. He, but we got to take that step of faith and we got to call on his name. The Bible says whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Have you called on the name of Jesus? I love what Eugene Peterson says. He's the one that wrote the message Bible. He says this, there are sacrifices that need to be made, enemies to love, friends to serve, poor people to help, Prisoners to go visit, visit, ignorance to confront, cruelty, cruelty to oppose, hypocrisy to amass, a open door to people who need us, to a world where others are waiting for an incredible witness, a committed friend. Will you go through that open door or will you huddle in the comfort of religion. See, we have a choice every day. We could like, we could keep our faith to ourselves. That's what the world wants to teach you. Keep your faith to yourself. Don't share that with anybody. That's just between you and God. But Jesus says, share your faith. Share your faith with the world. Remember, he says, go preach the good news to all nations, baptizing, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. See, that was said to his followers. And if you're a follower of Jesus, we're, we're all called to communicate the good news. It's not just the pastor's job. It's all of our responsibility. And I say, I'll, I'll take it a step further. It's our opportunity. It's our great privilege and honor to share Jesus with the world. So Philadelphia had an open opportunity to share Jesus with the rest of the world. So Jesus was challenging this church. All right, I know you love me. Now I want you to share this love with the rest of the world. There was an open door for them to do that. But that door was going to close eventually. In the 13th century, the Muslims took over Turkey. 
and pretty much ended Christianity in that country. Now, like, if you go to Turkey, you share Jesus with people, you may go to jail. There was actually a pastor not too long ago that started churches in Turkey and eventually got kicked out of Turkey for sharing the good news. See, this first century church was going through some persecution. And you might go through persecution if you share your faith with people. You may be rejected. But was Jesus rejected? He was rejected by the Pharisees. He was rejected by the Roman soldiers and put on a cross to die for your sins and for my sins. But the good news, he came back to life on the third day. We're getting ready to celebrate Easter soon. I want to invite you to our church, April 4th at 12 o'clock. We're going to be celebrating the resurrection. Yeah, we're going to have Easter eggs for the, the kids, but it's really not about that. It's really about Jesus. That's what Easter is really about. And so we read this in Isaiah 55, 6. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he's near. See, this opportunity to receive Jesus, it's, it's for today. It's not for tomorrow, per se, because you might not live another day. I have a friend named Johnny Fike that just died just weeks ago, or last month. I actually performed a funeral for him. I wish I had one more opportunity to share Jesus with him. I, I, I wish I had one more opportunity to invite him to church. But that door is closed. So you, you have friends and family members that don't know Jesus. You have opportunities to share Jesus with them now. But you might not have an opportunity tomorrow to share Jesus with that person. That person might die in a fatal car accident or you, you get news that he passed away or she passed away. See, we have an open door opportunity to share Jesus with the world but one day, Jesus is saying, that door will close. So this is my second point. Jesus opens the door for salvation. So you have an opportunity. Today is the day of, of salvation. Not tomorrow, today. So we got to take advantage of it. If you have never received Jesus as Lord and Savior, call on his name today. Don't wait till tomorrow. You might not have another tomorrow day to live. I remember my brother used to say, we, people are always talking about the second coming. Your second coming, the second coming of Jesus may be today for you if, if you die. And I'm, not, I'm praying to God that you don't die, but what I'm trying to commun communicate is we, we only have one life to live. And, and the Bible says only God knows the days. Like, like the numbers in my hair, I don't know how many hairs are in my head, but God knows. Well, the, the days of your life, God knows exactly how many days you have to live. And I have had friends that have died at the, the age of 18. Tim Crumrine, he played basketball on my basketball team, and he died. A, a drunk driver hit him, head-on collision, died instantly. He lived to 18. I have a friend named Joe that died in his early 30s. Josiah, my, my, my son that's filming right now, he had a friend named Christian that died at the age of seven. So we're not promised tomorrow. So I'm, I'm in, encouraging you to come to know Jesus while you have time, while there's time left, before that door closes. Mark 16, 15 says, go preach the good news to all creation. And so Jesus loves everybody all of creation. It doesn't matter who you are, male or female. It doesn't matter where you're from. He loves you. The good news is for everybody, not just for the Christians. It's for all people, all nationalities. And if you grew up in a different religion, I want you to know that Jesus loves you. He's the one that died on the cross for your sins. No other religious figure died on the cross for your sins. It was the Son of God that did that for you. Jesus, the Messiah. Jesus, Lord. Jesus, your friend. 
And so we read on that Jesus opens a door for us to have power and strength. Let me say that again. Jesus opens up a door for you to have power and strength. How do I know that? We read in 2 Corinthians 12, 20. That is why for Christ's sake, I delight in my weakness, insults, and hardships, and persecution, and difficulties. Are you having difficulties right now? For when I am weak, then I'm strong. Paul was having a difficulty. He was having some health issue and he was suffering. He went through persecutions and he was having a difficult time in life. But he says, you know what? When I'm feeling weak, I find my strength in Jesus. And so can you. He goes on to say in Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I want you to know that you could do all things through Jesus who gives you strength. And when Paul wrote that letter, he was saying, I've been through it all in life. I know how it's, how it's like to be broke as a joke. I know how it's like to have lots of money. I know how it's like when things are going good in my life. And I know how it's like when I'm going through the ringer and the secret to life is to remember this, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And he was sharing that with the church and he's sharing that with you right now. I don't know what you're going through right now, but remember this, you could do all things through Christ who gives you strength, who gives you the power that you need, even to overcome sin and temptation. How do I know this? See, this first century church they were being persecuted by who? By the Jews. The Jews were persecuting the Christians during this time period. See, the, the early Christians were claiming Jesus as Messiah, Jesus as the Son of God. And for that message, they were being persecuted left and right by the Jews. And I'm not here to pick on any religion. But we know that there's persecution happening right now. There's Christians that are being persecuted by Muslims, by Jews, by atheists, by all kinds of people. And we know persecution has been happening since Jesus died on the cross. Jesus was persecuted for what he said. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And Jesus was persecuted for that message. You will be persecuted if you say Jesus is the way to God. I will be persecuted for sharing that message. But this is the Christian message that Jesus died on the cross for our sins. That Jesus rose to life on the third day. And so, they were being persecuted by the Jews, but really behind that was Satan. The devil was persecuting the early church. And the devil is going to persecute you if you decide to follow Jesus. Sooner or later, you're going to be persecuted. And the devil's not going to come out of the sky with a pitchfork and with horns red in the face. No, he's going to persecute you through people, through temptation through drugs, through alcohol, through bad relationships. I love what KB says. He came out with this song not too long ago called Not Today, Satan. So the, the, the rap song's about, you know, that devil's coming at me and he's trying to tempt me to do this, to take a, a bite of that apple or, or the, um, uh, the fruit, the, the forbidden fruit. See, the enemy's gonna try to go, at, go after you he knows your temptations. He knows your weaknesses. And that's where the enemy is going to come at you hard. And then when you're feeling like you're being tempted and you can't, you're going to give in to the temptation, you go to Christ. I go to Christ and I say, God, I, I am weak. But where I, where I, when I am weak, you are strong. I just say that prayer a lot lately because 
last three years, actually going on four years, I've been suffering with acid reflux. Man, it's, it's, it's tough. And so I gotta go to God for strength when I'm feeling weak in the flesh. So when you're feeling spiritually weak, when you're feeling tired, maybe you have health issues, go to God for strength. And I promise you, He's gonna give you the strength that you need to overcome temptation, to overcome whatever you need to overcome in life. He helped the first century church and he wants to help you. Here's my last point. Jesus opens up the door for deliverance. We read in Revelation 3.10, Since you have kept my command to patiently endure, I will keep you from the hour of tri trial that is coming to the whole earth to test the people of the earth. Jesus says in the last days, there's gonna be great persecution that's gonna come upon all of the earth. It's gonna be a, a hour of trial, he calls it. He tells us more about that in Matthew 24, 21. For at that time, there will be a great tribulation unmatched from the beginning of the world until now and never to be seen again. So there's a great tribulation that's coming to the world. It's God's wrath upon our nations, upon the nations of the world. Are you ready for that time? I mean, we, we see COVID-19 hit the world stage last year and it's still lingering. It's been over a year and COVID's still here and people are still not waking up. Maybe it's a sign of the times that Jesus is coming back. Remember the 10 plagues of, that hit Egypt? Well, in the book of Revelation, we read about some of those plagues coming back. God allowing these plagues to hit the nations. And it, instead of people repenting of their sins, we read people are upset with God and they are, they're blaming God for it. Still today, people are not repenting of their sins. They're just blaming, oh, it's God's fault that the plague's here. But really, it's God's judgment upon our nations. Maybe God has allowed Satan to do this, to test us. Are we gonna serve him or are we gonna serve God? We gotta make that decision every day, not just on Sundays, not just on Mondays, but throughout the whole week, even on the Sabbath, even on Saturdays, we need to just make God Make time for God. Make time to rest. And so we read in Colossians 3, 6, because of these sins, the wrath of God is coming. You may ask, what sins are you talking about, Pastor Jose? Do you want to know what sins Paul's talking about? Here are the sins that Paul talks about. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to the earthly nature, sexual immora immorality, Impurity, lust, evil desires, greed, greed to sin, idolatry, that's worshiping false gods. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways, in the life you once lived. So he's talking about, I know you used to be like this, but God has changed you from the inside out. But now you must also get rid of these things. Anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language. Did you know having a, a bad mouth is a sin? Using bad language is a sin in God's eyes? Using God's name in vain, cursing? That displeases God. I, I love what James says. He says, I don't understand. How could blessings and cursings come out of the same mouth? How, one, one minute, how could people be blessing Jesus, blessing God, and the next minute, dropping the F-bomb, saying, saying the S word? He's saying, we got to be consistent. We can't be one way on Sunday and a different, day, different way on Mondays. And so I want to close with this last story. Uh, there's a guy named Kirk Franklin. Uh, it was all over the news or social media. So he's a famous uh, gospel singer. And so 
he's like singing in church on Sundays and then I guess his son got tired of the hypocrisy so he was recording his dad's conversation with him and his dad was cussing him out threatening to snap his neck it's all over Instagram and so Kurt Franklin says, well, I have an estranged relationship with my, my son. I was like, estranged relationship? And I was like, I'm not judging the guy, but what he should have said is, he should have said, son, if you're watching, I'm sorry for what I said. I promise never to talk to you that way again. Please forgive me. See, God doesn't want to have an estranged relationship with you. He, he doesn't want to have a distance relationship with you. He wants to have a good relationship with you. So how can we have a good relationship with God? We got to repent of our sins. We need to come to Jesus and accept him as Lord and Savior. When we do that, guess what? We become his friend. So we have a choice. We could be his friend or we could be his enemy. But Jesus would rather be your friend. So remember that Jesus loves you. He died on the cross for your sins. He is coming back. I don't know when, but he, the Bible says he's coming back soon. And so for those that finish the race, he promises, pr pr uh, promises a crown. He's going to give you a crown. See, back in those days, the, the Athen Games, those that completed the race, those that won the race, they got a special crown and it represents victory. So Jesus has this crown waiting for you. He, he wants to give you the victory. And how do you get the victory? You keep your eyes on Jesus. You hold tight to your faith. You don't let go of him until you finish that race. I'm going to pray for you and then we're going to close. God, I just pray for whoever is watching. They can hold tight to you and not give up. I pray, Father God, that you forgive us of our sins and help us, Lord, to serve you wholeheartedly. I just thank you, God, for our, our relationship with you. I thank you for our friendship with you. And I just pray, God, for whoever is watching, that you give them strength and you deliver them from temptation and fill them with your Holy Spirit. It's in your name I pray. Amen. I want to thank you again for joining me. Once again, tomorrow, I want to invite you to Hope City Church. We meet at 12 o'clock, 3750 Rosin Court. I'd love to meet with you. I want to just thank you again for joining me. Until next time, God bless you. Bye.